Good evening, Suman. Welcome to this talk on Artist Circle. How have you been? I'm pretty fine. I Thank think you a lot so of, much. I think a lot of artists uh, are uh, very happy to be able to share a lot about uh, themselves and their work, especially in this lockdown phase, you know, where many others have uh, sort of really been um, a little difficult. So um, yeah. I'm sure you have your tales as well to tell us. I'm sure you have some of your works to share with us. But uh, let's begin uh, by saying that, um, uh, Suman, you've been known, you are a self-taught artist. Uh, your works we've seen and uh, there is a lot of play of color. Was, yeah. this always, was this always something that you liked or have you cultivated it? How did it all begin? Actually, I, I keep moving around uh, in the different places. For me, it is very important to get self, uh, myself associate with my subject. Okay. So these are few peoples which are living immediate in my surrounding are different places which, which I free. keep traveling and moving. Maybe okay. paint it on the spot, simply sketch the thing or anything which I find interesting. Yes. And then uh, I come back into my studio and do the rest. But the colors uh, which you are talking about, I, I try to capture as much as from the nature itself. You know, if you okay. see closely my works, they are not. They're very real. Very yeah, they're very realistic. Also, they're very realistic. At the same time, there is yeah, a. They're very realistic, and they are. Their colors are also. Or very realistic real. Yes. Well. Yes. So I try to capture the as as much as I can. But so, when you do, when uh, you do that, Suman, when you do that, is there a need to want to express something that's going on in your mind, something that you've seen and observed around, something that you feel you must capture in a, uh, you know, on canvas? Yes, actually, when you move, move around, there is always something which you to paint. It can be anything, right. some light in the clouds, some light on the bird, or maybe up of the tree or some different uh, sunshine on the different landscapes. Once you have something uh, going on, then you try to put that on the canvas. True. This way you, I, I just try to dream a lot in between. I keep dreaming okay. how to compose that uh, subject and what should be the size and right. what are the elements required in that compositions and things like that. So you, you, we've seen, you know, we've seen some of your landscapes and they're excellent. Uh, I mean, uh, like you said that you like to paint what is around you. When there was this lockdown and it's probably been one of the longest phases where a lot of people haven't traveled. How was it for you, Suman, uh, not being able to go out at your own free will, uh, not being able to go and see and absorb the surroundings? How did, how did it turn out for you? And what was your work like in this lockdown period? Actually, this uh, epidemic is a difficult time for everyone, actually. Uh, and uh, although this is mostly quarantined inside this time, yes. like I keep working from... Uh, morning till late evening inside my studio. a daily routine which I follow. But uh, pandemic, the vibrations are not positive. You get to listen to so many True. negative things. So that all right. Yeah, uh, one you are not able to. One you are not able otherwise, to. Otherwise, hmm. uh, nothing much has changed. You know, it is it is just a routine work for us. But did you not feel the need and the desire to actually go out, step out, be amidst nature, and then sort of, you know, like you said, you like to go see up and then come back and do some work. So, yes, yes, that uh, did you need feel is it was always limiting? there. Did you feel it was limiting as an artist? Yes, or? of course. It is, we, 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 we have to slow down the movements, you know, uh, because uh, you cannot move as frequently to move, to use to move earlier. But so, then, like you said, uh, slowing down, and uh, I try to uh, work as much as inside my own studio. And then, like you said, that you know you like to dream. So maybe you were dreaming of uh, being outside, and that was probably facilitating uh, your canvas uh, effortlessly. Maybe, yeah. Yes. Yes. 
So, yeah. uh, how how do your series take shape? Uh, uh, when you know, whenever plan a work, do you plan an entire series, uh, Suman? How do you get working on something, uh, a subject? How do you approach it? You see, my works uh, mm-hmm. for the last two decades and a half. Yes, if, I have. If you see them in a sequence, mm. uh, my subjects are mostly related with the nature. Right. And uh, there is there is a weird coexistence in the human being and the animals, uh, human beings and the natures. There, there is respect shown towards each other. Mm. Uh, I, I just want to work on this theme. For any uh, beautiful coexistence, this is very much required. The coexistence. Uh, of the humanity and the nature. Very so right. mostly my subjects are related with these subjects only. Yeah. So uh, what are the kind of mediums that you, I mean, we know you work on two, three different mediums, but what is it that you really, really like? And how do you decide what you will want to work on for what kind of work or subject or theme? That, like when you move around uh, in the open, Oh, mm. so you're moving around in the la- uh, landscape or yeah, in the outdoors. some hill or mountain. Right. The quickest way is to pick your pencil and do it on the spot, some mm. maybe pencil sketch or thing like that. Mm. Next one comes, you can do a quick watercolor just to keep the colors and shades in your mind. And the rhythm going. One, but if you want to do more intense, if you want to do more intense work. Yeah. We opt for egg tempera in acrylic. Acrylic. On, in egg tempera, prefer to work on the smaller format. Hmm. And uh, acrylic, I prefer to work on the biggest uh, format. Bigger, bigger so canvases. In, okay. in basically, yes. Basically, these uh, uh, both the medium complement each other. So they are hmm. very different. Hmm. But their way of doing is almost similar right uh, but I, I I really think in egg tempera and uh, this is a technique which I started working I had my one-man show in Mumbai okay when it was, was this? in 1991 okay it was in 91 I had okay. this one-man show in Jahangir Art Gallery in Mumbai Okay. And uh, I had some 22 to 24 works, which were all egg tempera. Okay. And I was surprised that when the show opened, yeah. uh, very few people knew about the, this technique. technique. Although it is a very ancient technique, hmm. but very few people really know about it. I literally had to explain them what this technique is. Okay. And... Uh, uh, when the show opens, uh, the it was sold out almost after two, two three days. What could be the so reasons? I, what could be the reason, Suman, for people? What What do you think as an artist could have been the reason for people knowing about the technique as much? Because this is uh, not very much adapted by the artist in the Ooh. contemporary. If you, uh, for example. Indian com- contemporary artists. There are very few you'll find working in egg tempera. More than 15, 20 artists. Yeah, in very whole few. of the lot. Very few. It yes. is a bit bit painstaking. Mm. You, you, you actually have to prepare the color. The you actually have to mix the pigment powder colors with the yolk of the egg mm. and then mix with the water and then apply with a different layer. It's a bit painstaking, but gives you a beautiful result. Yeah. I can see some painting behind you, uh, Suman. What exactly is that? And uh, uh, do you think we can have a little, um, uh, you know, a look? Yeah, yeah, sure. Uh, Are you working on something? Actually, this uh, this is a, a huge work. Okay. I'm working on this. Okay. Uh, it, is, uh, it is acrylic on canvas. And, so... Okay. Uh, uh, this this is based on the coming of spring, when the snow on the hill. 
hmm. and the white started blossoming on the landscape it is concerning that so i i am recently working on this very canvas and uh, how long would you take uh, for making something like this how long does it take for you uh, suman well well it depends uh, uh, in the process you add things and then you delete so many things hmm. till you find the effect which you want in the canvas okay. like uh, which is going on in your mind hmm. it is pretty, pretty fluid okay, your yeah. thought is pretty fluid fluid and yes you are trying to put that on the canvas you know right ha huh. which is pretty one dimensional so Uh, many things are added and deleted in between so the bigger from my actually going to take time. Mm. and uh, on the smaller sizes less is time okay uh, you have some other works that you would like to show us suman uh, actually i can maybe not uh, maybe not uh, around but you... we could show on screen on screen if we could show something you know some yeah, of your yeah. work i i think that that will be better if you can show okay so yeah, we'll yeah. show one or two of your works yes this was a uh, uh, very recently done tempra oh, works very beautiful the first one is the song yes. of the river. song of the river uh, and this work was uh, in uh, one of the latest binale in barcelona spain oh the, uh, the one which was, was last year yeah the figure uh, the figure exactly. was 2019 right the world's best figurative exactly, art exactly okay 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 so uh, did you showcase this one there this one as well e- e- exactly this work was exhibited there oh, and uh, uh, after the exhibitions the museum work also so this oh, has really? gone into their own collection that's very realistic suman that is so beautiful you almost feel like wanting to touch the water Uh, yeah this is a work which was uh, exhibited right here in jammu i had a woodman show called where okay. i had some 15 to 16 works exhibited hmm. it was among so those this was show there okay 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 yeah tell me also you know so oh this is what about this one wow this is the promised land the title of this work is promised land this hmm. was also part of the sacred vision my woodman show in amar pal and these all the three works are done in egg tempera technique all are egg tempera their, okay. their their base is a, a panel hmm? wood wood panel wood panel and uh, that panel is also has to prepared before you actually work on it yes yes you know what i feel whenever i've seen your works the there is this feeling of wanting to sort of walk into the frame you know they are yeah. realistic there is uh, they are abstract there's there's a little element of both but what i felt when i see your works is that you know you want to step into the frame you want to get inside the canvas and meet characters tell me when you're making these you know uh, when you're making these suman what exactly is going on in your mind do you want to have an absolute reflection of an ideal world that you have in your uh, you know in the recesses of your mind or is it that uh, you sort of let it cultivate and develop as and when uh, you know the brush moves or how do you do it is there this attempt Actually, to uh, there is all you know is there this attempt to want to capture the viewer within the frame that you've already uh, made uh, for us to see what exactly goes on in your mind when you are making and painting something i told you actually there is always some uh, some process, thought process going on in my mind you said that yes uh, so before i start a work hmm. there is always something going on which i am yeah. uh, thinking about and i try try work on that a lot no so, what i meant so i what i meant particularly was with regards to these works hmm yes exactly it is basically uh, those thoughts which i try to put on the but it is not easy because uh, because so when you are trying to put that on uh, can many things are left behind true at the when you ultimately finish the work yeah because uh, it's in memory you are successful 
some right. sometime there is always a failure also hmm is moving in the right direction you feel pretty good and pretty positive but right. if it is moving in the wrong direction it is it is not easy that's true that's true i'm i'm sure an artist has to battle a lot of emotions within but what what i was asking you was yeah. particularly with regards to these three paintings that we just saw so for example that girl you know by the by the water so is it that you have seen us yeah. have you have you witnessed thing like that uh, exactly this way or you are trying to merge two three different things that you have and put them across uh, on your canvas that's what i wanted to know yes actually it it wasn't like the way you, this is a composition which i created myself okay uh i i was just moving around and i i had a beautiful feeling about the river okay so i tried to add few elements moment of that water you know so this girl came in and then eventually if you see there are few words flying on the water right uh, the, uh, that is they are swallows mm. they are touching the uh, yes water. Uh, if you see this uh, ripples yeah right you can also see the birds touching the water right yeah, and, i can uh, see that few butterflies which i added in the end okay to make the composition complete complete so this is how i work you know on a, mm. a particular canvas mm. uh, there are quite a few questions i see here is it difficult to use egg tempura you said uh, you said it is but uh, how difficult it is you know as compared to uh, a regular artwork the technique like, uh, how difficult is it if you work with acrylic or oil they you you get the ready made paints hmm. the market hmm. but with that time you actually have to prepare the uh, paint hmm. you actually not only have to prepare the paint but the surface on which you you have to paint okay planning to create the artwork ha huh. prepare that surface as well which is uh, quite a time consuming process hmm. so uh, uh, but it is very interesting as well you know uh, if you go through the process me uh, working in egg tempera for satisfaction rather than working in any other medium okay Uh, so then uh, you know i mean yes amazing artwork uh, so many of them you feel that you know it's an amazing uh, artwork do you use raw egg asks one person uh, we actually use the yolk of the egg it's not mm. the white it's the yellow of the egg actually you have to the delete the mm. white part of the egg uh, okay very clearly you have to remove the white part and then you the huh. yolk of the egg with the distilled water and the pigments right. dry pigments powder color and then you dry pigments work with layers upon layers egg okay. temp okay okay medium which which requires of patience and uh, hmm. commitment because you you hmm. are not going to get any effect immediately uh, you hmm. may have to works in three layers or five layers till you get that effects which you actually want to have so that is one reason it is quite yeah, one, time consuming so one of our uh, uh, you know viewer uh, wants to know ordinary how ordinarily how long does this artwork take you know normally what's the kind of time that it would take if you are working on the smaller format it normally takes some hmm. 15 to 20 days but in case you're working on uh, the bigger format like this uh, mm. a song of song of the river was say some 2 by 2 and a half feet so it mm. it took me some 2 to 3 months to complete this works because there was a lot of okay. detailing and uh, meticulous work in uh, in this particular work so depend okay. upon the size one as well as viewer, the subject both so one of our viewer is saying that why do you make this type of art i mean what is why are you drawn to such subjects because i like to capture nature in its real 
form you know with of course with pristine form yeah uh, own subject and with my own com yeah actually these are the subjects which which touch my heart and uh, i try to put my whole heart and soul into it and till i get mm. the i mean uh, real real result which i really want to achieve i stop working i i keep working on that okay. so it it gives me immense satisfaction uh, once i finish that work how many hours uh, suman do you put every day to work for me it's a, uh, almost daily routine uh, like i to my mm-hmm. studio say uh, 10 o'clock in the morning and then i work okay. till late evening say 7 to 6 o'clock and uh, it, it's almost a, a everyday routine only when i have to go outside in the open to do on the spot uh, work hmm. uh, then i uh, take my time from the studio otherwise i hmm. work mostly in inside my studio uh, when you are you know when you are giving the finishing touches how many glazes do you apply one uh, viewer wants to know well glazes depend uh, how much your uh, book required the glaze mm. uh, in uh, uh, like in at to give a glaze uh, mm. is quite a sensitive you know way of giving a glazing because it is very fragile medium if you're working with the acrylic mm. uh, it is a different story Acry- in acrylic you can uh, give as much glazing as you want but in hmm. at tempera you have to be a bit careful i even give glazing in dry brush technique when i work with the watercolor also so depends okay. how much layers of glazing your that Are particular required. work require requires uh, okay yeah. so another uh, another uh, viewer says there's a painting with a man in the tree what was the inspiration behind that painting uh, may i know the title of the work a title Actually, okay let's a, see the title there are comes. so many paintings which are there is one with your uh, your your own uh, portrait as well which i okay, thought was very yeah, yeah 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 i don't know if okay. the per- person is saying that yeah but that one is very interesting are the mountains your original muse are the mountains your original muse that's what uh, one viewer wants to know are mountains your muse yes, your original of muse course. yeah mountains have in fact always inspired me you know i i i really love working on them okay the uh, i mostly spend on the hills because uh, i get so many ideas and which i can keep working and working forever okay and keep producing i can produce as many works as i so so just like some people are drawn towards the sea uh you are more drawn towards the exactly, mountains exactly exactly yeah? uh what is your yeah. source of strength what is your source of strength for me uh i think nature main strength for me hmm. uh because subjects are related to that if you see my uh, any painting all the elements related with the natures hmm butterflies some insects trees uh, rivers so i believe that is my main strength uh, when i compose a, uh, compositions mm. when i make compositions uh, i i prefer taking these all elements into my right. compositions okay another viewer wants to know about the bee man the man with dredges so you have also attended uh, binales and you know you've gone for so many exhibitions and all that uh, suman tell us how is it how does it uh, change an artist from within and how does it reflect on their work Ex- i believe attend- participating in these uh, international events hmm. give you a lots of uh, time for networking like okay. you uh, get to meet many other artists who who have come from the different countries mm. working in the different styles and mediums 
able to see their works physically in those biennales right. and you can actually discuss the tech, uh, how they are, they are working in kind of environment they are working mm. so uh, i remember uh, when we were part of university fests mm. we used to had these uh, zonal and national festivals of arts okay and uh, 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 in one of the festival i still remember we were in kanpur mm. and uh, the very celebrated indian artist subodh gupta and we were both were participating in the same festival yes so so this is how you meet people and you get connected mm. and still good friends we do speak to each other occasionally mm. and uh, during the international binale also in benefit which you get you you get to work the volume of work is so much that uh, you learn so many things out of those events mm. so they are i i think very important part of your as a career tell us about your finland residency and the show suman finland uh, uh, show was organized by one of my friend mm. uh, who who i met in florence binale actually okay. we both met there and then she uh, invited me to finland to uh, showcase we started with a two man show first uh, and then uh, after a year, they gave me a one man show also okay uh, i still have uh, many people uh, uh, many of my clients from finland who hmm. regularly acquiring my works and they really love my work uh, uh, suman uh, there are some who would still like to have a look at the painting that is behind you uh, you think it's going to be possible yeah yeah sure please yeah can you see it now yeah i can see it and i'm sure the others can yes quite quite a lot yes lovely so when tell us who is that one art who has really inspired you you'll be uh, surprised to know when i started tempera there mm -hmm. were uh, it was an author whose name is andrew white yeah uh, our his work i was really very very impressed uh so when i saw his work i straight away started uh, experimenting in egg tempera Mm -hmm. and uh, uh although i didn't know much about egg tempera but when i read his article in the magazine how mm -hmm. how how he was working in technique so i i started working this and eventually after a year or two i developed the tech so there were also few indian masters like uh, ganesh pine Mm. but achary I, i really love watching their works nesh pine has been uh, in egg tempera he's produced some of the uh, um, uh, quality of works in egg tempera technique uh, how do you think covid has impacted the art world suman i think uh, this today's meeting is one of the reason uh, we are on the internet and yes. uh, that technology is one thing which has connected us all together so covid has connected us and uh, everybody is just prefer prefer to staying inside their homes and their studio to work mm -hmm. so covid has i think uh, created a lot of difficulties the uh, all of the humanity and mm. uh, uh although we we are working in the same way as we used to work, but uh, it is really d difficult for the as a whole yeah of course it's definitely different uh, okay suman uh, uh, another viewer wants to know what was the turning point in your life when you decided to become an artist considering that you have studied law 
Yeah, uh, actually, uh, since my and college time, I was into every kind of art. Hmm. I was doing painting, was sculpting, and even we had a musical band called. Uh, we had a, a five-piece musical band, hmm. uh, which uh, we constantly uh, performed till the university days. Hmm. But when I finished my PhD. and uh, saw this uh, article in the magazine about Andrew White that was the turning point uh, i left everything i left music and everything and i seriously started uh, working as a painter so I, i believe that was personally for me so there must have been some churning of feelings or some thought process that went that way i i told you that i uh, when i read that article i started working on that technique hmm. started experimenting in neck tempera hmm. because i wanted to uh, see that effect in my work hmm. i start exploring that technique and uh, i was able to do that and the first one show which i had in jangi it was full of work which was created within the span of two years. so uh, i was pretty satisfied with the outcome of those uh, uh, works okay yeah and when you were a child suman this is something that uh, i'm sure a lot of us would want to know that when you were a child uh, do you recollect uh, sort of stopping by certain artworks or paintings in wonder or uh, uh, trying to figure out what they are was there any of that element within you that, uh, back then i i believe uh, art was always in my heart ever since i was born okay because uh, uh, when i was in the school this uh, drawing was very fascinating for me Hmm. I I used to wait for the drying period during okay. sc- school days, hmm. and that drying my favorite subject. Hmm. So uh, gradually, when I went to college, uh, although I was working, I was painting, but I was sculpting as well. Okay. Uh, because this everything was going in my mind all hmm. the time. and during our university times and college time joined the theater groups mm. we even did all that stuff so every kind of art was with me i i actually did every kind of art but eventually when i uh, finished my llb right. then i uh, started working seriously as a painter okay that's nice procure Drawing pens must have been difficult in the nineties. Very, very difficult. Uh, since we didn't have this uh, internet and all that, I still hmm. I had to purchase uh, from one book from USA, and hmm. uh, I had to find some who was having a credit card with him. Oh yes. Buy that one. book. Huh. Say five to ten years, the credit card was available. You know, it was. it was such a difficult right uh, but uh, no we have uh, the art material at our doorsteps actually yes, you get yes. everything you get everything studios. yeah in fact there are some artists you know i was i was talking yeah. to some younger artists who say that now sometimes when you go to some art shop to actually collect material you come to know that there are newer things that have come in the market yeah. does does that happen with you also suman since you are a very senior artist but does that happen to you where people come and tell you that okay now this is available or uh, something like that yeah yeah actually in the medium which you are working you you always want to know more about that what new is coming and uh, when you have friends living in the different place in different part of the country or outside country Right. You keep interacting and keep asking them mm-hmm. what new thing, what new mediums are, what new paper are come in the market, and and in India, uh, in India, 
everything nowadays it's not difficult to uh, anything so do you feel suman that it is more interesting to do art now than it was ever before in in the in the times that we are living in with so many so many things available the ability to be able to travel so many binales all over do you think it is a very good time for artists of course because you see uh, you have t- technologies with you yeah you are connected everywhere and uh, you can go online and order anything and mm-hmm. speak to anyone you can mm-hmm. go anywhere trip i think this is really great you you feel so good you can actually anywhere and see the work like i something very interesting hmm. when i had my one man show in pittsburgh in usa 2014 okay uh we christine fisher who gave me one one man show so when i uh, had this show in usa i i planned to visit andrew white studio he mm. used to live in pennsylvania okay the place called chads fords in pennsylvania mm. uh, when i uh, went to us the opening of my show mm. uh, me and white planned the trip to go to chads fords to see studio there okay. so once i uh, opening up the show hmm. we traveled to uh, new york first we went to new york and see all the very all were art world the hmm. uh, museums and and then from new york we traveled to chatsworth actually uh, to and the white studio was my, one of my dream okay uh, so it was so so wonderful to go there yes and actually see those works which i used to see in the book scenes so yeah. i was able to see those works physically you know so that was the best part of my you know yeah. art journey and so is, these yeah, sure these you. communications uh, uh, travel has really made things so easy for in the art world very true have you tried vegetable dyes suman no actually uh, we don't uh, try vegetable but uh, we we do natural uh, pigments powder colors these are the colors which are which are acquired from nature's maybe from some flower from natural stones and uh, although this is again a very pain staking thing but i i do get these uh, uh, colors sometime uh, uh, it, it is no really rare to get these colors but uh, i i prefer working with them some like as an artist it must be a good high to be able to source different uh, ways and forms how to get the right colors and all than just taking the easy route right i'm sure Yeah. that tells us that also is a process which you must be enjoying yeah of course uh, th- there is always a fascination like if you are visiting a place hmm. there is always a urge to buy things concerning your professions like if i am an artist true i will always look for my materials you know yes yes no matter where you even go. if i go uh, go to some mountains or uh, hmm. near some rivers i try to find my own objects it could be a few stones or few driftwoods or pine cones or things like that you know uh, and uh, i try to keep all those things inside my work you get so many inspirations they remind me, uh, those moments when i was active. like i remember i was traveling from to back to uh so very audible and uh, in mm. between we had this changla pass so this was mm. a height of some 15 16000 feet so i i collected few very beautiful stones, a few uh lichens wild lichens from the 
up the, those mountains. I'm still keep keeping those in my studios with me. So this is the way you know so many things. Very uh, they can be colors, they can be wild things, and they can be anything which will inspire you to work. One of your uh, fans wants to know, do you think being an artist also means keeping a little child alive within? Please share your thoughts. Yeah, very much, very much. I think you, uh, an artist has always been, should be working, always mm -hmm. should be thinking. The process of, process of, should continue. And when you finish a uh, old work mm -hmm. and uh, you are about to finish, there is always something new coming to work on. So, so you start that. Mm -hmm. I, I, I believe this, this continued uh, for an artist. Mm -hmm. Important for the growth of an artist. Uh, for the continuations of this process. So are you looking forward now after this entire, you know, five, six months, Suman, of being at home? Of course, uh, being an artist, it must have been a blessing that you were able to do your work. But are you looking forward to going out again, traveling and again, getting your dose of inspiration cut out on the canvas? Oh, yes, very much. Uh, I, I, I am actually missing those moments, you know. Surely. I'm a... I'm a very frequent traveler. I keep moving mm -hmm. around. Uh, and uh, this is one part which I am missing. So uh, I am even uh, finishing with all the data which I'm having with me. Okay. Uh, I'm almost done with that. Mm -hmm. And actually, I am planning a, a one man show, uh, maybe ending this year if the situation is okay. Oh, lovely. In USA. And okay. uh, we are we are again having a museum show in USA. Okay. I have to produce few uh, new works for those events. So uh, and to produce those works, uh, you, you you need to go, go outside around. and look around. Yeah. To to get inspired and start reworking in the studio. Okay. So my last question, just a little curious to know, how many works were you able to complete in this lockdown? <laughs> I don't count uh, how many works. There's some approximate. Uh... Uh, maybe, maybe, maybe five to six works I am able to finish during this lockdown because I my work is very. It time takes a lot of yes. time to produce. True. Uh, and I I produce very few throughout the year. Right. So that is the reason. So these ones that you have done, will these be the ones that will go to the U.S. in the exhibition towards the year? Exactly. End? Exactly. We are already. We are already working on that. I'm working with a gallery in USA who is planning all that. There's a huge uh, museum auction coming up in USA. Okay. So I'm going to be part of that. So, you, so uh, I'm planning to take these works. show. I think all of us are extremely curious now to see and uh, figure out what the works were, especially at a time when you were not really traveling, something that you really love. And uh, it, it was fantastic, so I'm getting an insight into your uh, mind, uh, what you like to do and uh, your works, of course. Thank you very much for being with us. Thank you so much uh, for giving me the time on this platform. I am thankful to Poonam Singh, me, who's been doing a great job in the art. And uh, they have really Kumar Vijogi to a new height. I don't think uh, uh, artist organization is doing as much as Kumar Vijogi is doing. Uh, my heart, heartfelt gratitude to Poonamji for inviting me in this talk show. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh -huh.